It's the gospel truth. It's the word of the Lord. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a two-way sword. It's a road map to heaven. And it's heaven's good news. Thank God for the Bible. It's the gospel truth. It's time for the Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. For more information about the ministry and the music of Brother Scott, go each week to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. You can get more messages and music at the website. So be sure to go to www.scottthomasministries.com once every week. And now, here is Dr. Scott Thomas and the Gospel Truth. If you have your Bible this morning, let's turn to Psalms 69. Psalm 69, verse 30. What we'll be reading this morning. Once you turn there, you can stand with us. So good to have each and every one of you. <clears throat> this is a good looking bunch this morning, except one or two of you, but we're not going to name names. All right. <laughs> hey, good to have you this morning. Psalm 69, verse 30, is what we'll be reading. Preaching on, magnify Him with thanksgiving. It says here in verse 30 of 69 of Psalms, I will praise the name of God with a song and, with, and will magnify Him with thanksgiving. God, we thank You, Lord, for Your Holy Spirit. We thank You, Lord, for the singing this morning. Lord, we want to thank You and praise You for all You've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for living in the country we live in. Though it's not perfect, far from perfect, full of sin, we are free to worship you this morning. And I thank you, God, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the building we have to come to to worship you. Thank you for our family, our friends, Lord. Most of all, thank you for the Holy Spirit for dying on the cross of Calvary. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Changing my life completely. We give you the praise for it all. God, let us give thanks to you this morning and this week. And from here on out, we give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this morning. I'll give you a little history on Thanksgiving. President George Washington proclaimed it as a national day of Thanksgiving in 1789. And the custom was revived by President Lincoln in 1863. The present custom of the fourth Thursday in November was set by a joint resolution of Congress in 1941. And as the psalmist wrote, he said we ought to magnify Him, talking about God, with thanksgiving. But we're not just to do that just in this season at this time, but... We're to do that continually according to Hebrews 13 and 15. It says, By Him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Continually giving fruits of our th lips, giving thanks to, to His name. God is magnified. I believe this, that God is magnified when we honor Him with thanksgiving. And I believe it honors the Lord when our families truly come together and a heartfelt, sincere prayer of giving thanks to God for what He has done in our hearts, lives, and hope. Friend, let me tell you something. When you gather this week, you ought to come together with heartfelt thanks. Not just because it's the tradition. This is what we always do this time of year. It's not for the purpose of just getting together and cracking a few jokes and watching football and all that. We're supposed to come together and give thanks unto God for all He's done. Perhaps you say, uh, well, maybe uh, you're having a hard time with burdens or problems, and, 
heart. You say, I, I just find it hard to be thankful this year, preacher. Well, I want to ask you to look at your blessings this morning and the things you have instead of the things you don't have. Amen. Amen. And, and try, I want to try to help you by giving you some things which will we should all be thankful for this morning. Amen. First of all, let me say, let us be thankful for God's part. Let us be thankful for God's pardon. Are you pardoned this morning? Are you saved? Amen. Amen. Psalms 31 and 32 and 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Thank God for his pardon. God's pardon is a free pardon. We ought to thank him for that. This free pardon is a forgiving pardon. I don't care what you've done in your life, where you've been, what you've done, what kind of sin may be in your life, may not be in your life. Friend, I want you to know you can come to the Lord and it's a free pardon. And all you have to do is ask Him for it. And He'll forgive you of your sins. It don't matter what you've done and what you've been into. God will forgive you freely. 1 John 1 and 9 says if we confess our sins, as that's your part, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It's a forgiving pardon. And it's a free pardon that is a forever pardon. He will forgive you forever. Never to be brought up against you again. Thank God for the forever and forgiving pardon that's free through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ought to be thankful for it. And God's pardon is not only a free pardon, it's a full pardon. We are fully cleared of all unrighteousness. Yeah. Amen. Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. That's a full part, fully cleared of all unrighteousness. And we're fully cleansed from all unrighteousness. In 1 John 1 and 9, it says he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we're fully cleared, fully cleansed. Have you been to Calvary? Have you come to the Lord? Has He come in your life? Has He saved you? you got something to be thankful for right there. You say everything's bad in my life. Everything's going wrong. But if you're saved by the grace of God and you're pardoned, you ought to thank God for the pardon that's in your life this morning. So let us be thankful for God's pardon. Let us be thankful for God's peace. Psalms 29, 11, The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. God's peace is a reality. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. His peace is real in life storms. His peace is real in life sorrows. You're going through some storms, you're going through some sorrows, guess what? You ought to be thankful for God's peace because it is a reality that you can have peace in the storms and in the sorrows. You can be thankful for that. God's peace is not only reality, God's peace is a reconciliation. Reconciliation is the changing of a relationship between God and man for the better. Have you had that change in your life where it's been changed, but the relationship between you and God has changed for the better? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. We are reconciled through the deeds of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 says, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. Reconciled, changed our relationship. You see, once I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. As a matter of fact, I was far away from God and out in sin and wasn't where I ought to be with God. But I came to Him and I said, I, He said, let us reason together. And I came to Him and we sat down and I prayed to Him and asked Him for a better relationship. I wanted Him in my life and He wanted to be in my life. And He reconciled that through Jesus Christ and now I have a relationship with the Lord. That's something to be thankful for. 
We're reconciled through the deeds of Jesus. We're reconciled through the death of Jesus. Romans 5 and 10 tells us that. We are reconciled to God through the death of His Son. I preach the truth to you this morning. We ought to be thankful for God's pardon, God's peace. Let us be thankful for God's provisions. Let us be thankful for God's provisions. Let's look at Psalms 23. Uh, the anthem of all uh, psalms seems to be. Psalms 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. What shall I not want? Well, first of all, I shall not want for rest. Why? Because He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. I shall not want for restoration. Why? Because He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I shall not want for refuge. Why? Because, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. I shall not want for refreshment. Why? Because Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I shall not want for rejoicing. Why? Because Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I can rejoice this morning. I shall not want for reinforcements. Why? Because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall not want for retirement. Why? Because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friend, I'm telling you, the Lord shepherd and he's all I want and he's provided everything in the world everything I need and that's something to be thankful for he has provided thank God for God's provisions God's pardon, God's yeah. peace this morning I want to say also well let me just give you this illustration there's two men they was walking through a field one day and when they spotted an, an enraged bull this big old bull was after him. Instantly they darted toward the nearest fence. And the, storm, uh, the, the storming bull followed in hot pursuit. And it was soon apparent that they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't going to make it. Terrified, one of the fellows looked at the other and he said, Put up a prayer, John. We're, we're in for it. You've got to start praying. John answered back and he said, I can't. I've never made a public prayer in my life. He said, but you must. You've got to have to be a prayer. And this bull, bull is catching up with us. John, he is panting along running. He said, all right, Tim. I'll say the only prayer I know, the one the father used to repeat at my table, at what the, uh, my dad used to repeat. And he began and he said, oh, Lord, for what we're about to receive, let us be thankful. <laughs> <laughs> only prayer he knew to pray. <laughs> We can be thankful though this morning for God's provisions. Amen. How He's taken care of us. Do you realize how God's taken care of you? You're here this morning, pretty good health, both, most of us. And, and, and God's made a way for you to be here this morning. That's the provision to God. Or be thankful for it. Let us be thankful for the, God's power. Psalms 21, 13, He said, Be Thou exalted, Lord, in Thine own strength, so will we sing and praise Thy power. God's power can change your destination. It changed mine. If you're saved, it changed yours, and you ought to be thankful for it. Hell is the destiny for all who won't accept Jesus as their Savior. Psalms 9 17 tells us the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. But that's what hell's destination is. But heaven is the destination for all who will accept Jesus as their Savior. For John 14 3 says, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. God's power can change your destination. And God's power can change your desires. I'm thankful God's power has changed my desires from fulfilling the desires of the flesh to instead fulfilling the desires of the Father. It's not about what I want anymore. It's all about what He wants is what I'm trying to say this morning. 
And I'm thankful that God's power has changed me. Has God's power changed your life? Lord, be thankful for it. Let us be thankful for God's promises. This book, this, this King James Version Bible this morning is filled with the promises of God. His Word is His promise. You know, we used to, men would give their Word. And when they gave their Word, it was a promise that you could count on. But I got news for you. Jesus is still that way. He's an old timer in that way. He gave His Word, which is a promise, and you can't count on it this morning. Amen. I, he said in Psalms 119, 14, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. Talking about the testimonies of God in His Word. As much as in all riches. You see, people think the riches are in money and houses and lands, but the greatest riches is right here in this book. The greatest riches are right here. The testimonies, the promises of God. Amen. And I'm thankful that God's promises are pure. Psalms 119, 140 says, Thy word is very pure. Thy word, thy promises. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. And I'm also thankful that God's promises are powerful. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the Word of God, the promises of God, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I'm also thankful that God's promises are preserved. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, my promises shall not pass away. We can be thankful this morning that we have the promises of God. Amen. The pardon of God. The peace of God. The power of God. Be thankful for these things. And then let me say, let us be thankful for God's protection. Psalms 18, 48 and 49 said, He delivereth me from mine enemies. Who's your enemy? The old devil. If you're here this morning, I'm telling you, He's delivered you from it. Yea, Thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore shall I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Friend, I'm telling you this morning, we can lift our voices up and sing the praises of God and be thankful this morning. Amen. Despite what all is going on in this old world, He protects me. He protects you from the devil, from discouragement, from disease, and from damnation. And we can be thankful for that. Finally, let me say, let us be thankful for God's presence. God's presence. Aren't you thankful for His sweet Holy Spirit that we feel here this morning? For what He does in our hearts and lives. Psalms 95 and 2 says, let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. And that's not just on a thanksgiving service. That's every service. Come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. With singing, with psalms, with songs. That's what we've done this morning. Let us be thankful for God's presence. Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Aren't you glad the Lord shows up when you're in trouble? Boy, I tell you, I've seen troubles and I've seen trials and problems come along and things happen in people's lives and, and then God would get right in the middle of it and help you. Amen. He's present in the Christian's heart. He's present in the Christian's home. And He's present in the church house. Amen. Thank God for it this morning. Are you as thankful as I am this morning? When was the last time you took a minute to pause. Come to an altar or kneel somewhere, get along somewhere, and kneel down and say, Thank you, Lord. And sit and just magnify God and the Lord with thanksgiving. You know, today would be a good time to start a regular time to thank Him and for all He's done in your life. As the world looks upon me, as we struggle along, they say I have nothing. All oh, that they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing. How I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, 
Cause there's a roof up above me And I've a good place to sleep There's food on my table And there's shoes on my feet You gave me your love, Lord And a fine family Thank you, Lord, for your blessing Now I know I'm not wealthy And these clothes, they're not new I don't have much money Oh, but Lord, I have Come and you pray this morning. And to me, that's all that that's matters all. Though the world may not There's a roof up above me And I've a good place to sleep There's food on my table And there's shoes on my feet You gave me your love, Lord You've been listening to The Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. To order this message or to contact Brother Scott, go to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. Be sure to come back next week for more Bible preaching and The Gospel Truth. Yes, I love my Bible. Cause it's the gospel.